We live in a world where organic food is rare or expensive or not readily available. As for the mass production, either food has been genetically modified or it has been treated with hundreds of pesticides to increase its growth, durability and shelf life. So why am I even talking about fresh produce today? Well, lately I came across an article released by EWG.org where they have released a list of dirty dozen that is fruits and vegetables that have lots and lots of pesticides and if not cleaned or washed properly, it increases health risk, especially in children under 15 years of age. So basically eating so-called healthy fruits and vegetables will do more harm than good if we do not wash them properly. Though this list is meant for USA, it does highlight a fact that every country uses pesticides to grow fresh produce and there is a risk of its ingestion if not handled properly. So I thought it's important that we do highlight this situation and work towards a healthy tomorrow, not only for ourselves, our family, but especially for our future generation, that is our kids. I will first show you how I wash vegetables and discuss if it's the right way to wash them. Later, I will share how I store vegetables to increase its shelf life and also show you if these techniques are effective or not by showing you how my vegetables performed after one week in the refrigerator. So let's get started. So the first question that comes in my mind every time I think of organic produce is does organic produce contain pesticides or not? While standards for organic farming are different from the conventional farming practices, organic farmers are permitted to use certain approved pesticides on their crops. 25 organic pesticides are approved approximately for organic produce versus the staggering 900 that are currently allowed to be used on conventional crops. So you can see there is a huge difference. Pesticides used in both conventional and organic farming can be harmful to health if they are ingested in high doses. Many people choose organic produce in hopes of reducing their exposure to pesticides. However, it should be noted that pesticides aren't just found in fruits and veggies. They are widely used on crops like cereals, grains, as well as on lawns, flower gardens and to control insects as well. And because pesticides are so widespread, the best course of action to reduce your exposure is to choose organic foods or to thoroughly wash the conventional produce which I will discuss soon and practice more sustainable garden care and insect repelling methods. So let's talk about what are the ways to reduce pesticide exposure from foods. According to healthline.com, the following are simple, safe and powerful methods you can use to reduce pesticide residues on produce. The first one is scrub them in cold water. Rinsing fruits and vegetables in cold water while scrubbing them with a soft brush can remove some pesticide residues. Run your vegetables under running water. This will remove most of the pesticides and works better than soaking vegetable in water. Patting the fresh produce after washing also gets rid of any residual pesticides. Baking soda water A study found that washing vegetables with baking soda and water solution was more effective in removing pesticides residues than tap water alone. Peel fruits and vegetables Removing the skin of dirty dozen fruits and vegetables can significantly reduce dietary intake of pesticide residues. I have the links to dirty dozen and clean 15 in the description box in case you would like to refer them. Blanching In one study, blanching produce led to more than 50% reduction in pesticide residue levels in all vegetable and fruit samples. Last one is rinsing produce with ozonated water. Ozonated water has been found to be particularly effective in removing pesticide residues from food. Using any of the above evidence-based practices can significantly reduce pesticide residues on fresh produce. However, scrubbing produce under cold water, washing with a baking soda solution or peeling are excellent ways to reduce pesticides from your fruits and vegetables. 
Veggies like cauliflower, broccoli should get a bath. So soak it in a bowl for few minutes and add vinegar or baking soda to get rid of the pesticides. If it's a fragile fruit or vegetable like berries, put it in a colander and run it under tap water. Then soak in vinegar water for few minutes and change the water few times to remove all the pesticides and fungicides. To wash grapes, rub some salt to the grapes then add water and soak for few minutes. Change the water 2-3 times then consume grapes. Apple Scrub the wax layer with a vegetable scrubber as beneath this wax layer lies the pesticides that was sprayed on the fresh produce to extend its life. So make sure to scrub and take off that wax layer only then the pesticides beneath will be removed. So these are the few ways that you can reduce your pesticide exposure to a great extent. Now let's see how to store vegetables in the fridge to last longer. I will show you the process that I have followed today. So once all the vegetables have been washed properly and dried, now it's time to pack and store them in the refrigerator. Let's start with okra first. In my experience, if I wash okra, then it gets moldy in few days as okra likes dry and warm temperature. It's best to keep okra unwashed at room temperature if you are going to consume it in 2-3 days. But if you want to use it after a week or so, it will not do good on the counter as it will turn hard. So it's best to be stored in the refrigerator. I like to wipe the okra with a damp paper towel Air dry it and then store it in a ziplock bag with a paper towel in it to absorb extra moisture. I like to store it in the crisper compartment so that it's not exposed to very cold temperatures. Dudhi Loki or Bottle Guard I have tried different methods of storing dudhi and this by far is the best method in my opinion. Wrap the bottle guard in a wax paper and store it in the crisper compartment and it will stay fresh for at least 10 days. If you do not have a wax paper, wrap it in a paper bag and it should stay fresh for days. Carrots If you submerge carrots in water and store it this way, it will stay fresh for weeks to come. However, the water needs to be changed at least once a week. The carrots I have bought are too long and it may not stay well from the tops but rest should be fine. I will show you how they do in a week's time. I will also put some in the ziplock bag and see how it goes. Eggplants Eggplants I will simply wash and put them in ziplock bags. By the way, I keep reusing these ziplock bags and hence they do not go into the trash for a long time to come. Mint. Once the mint leaves have dried, I will separate all the leaves and store it in a jar lined with a paper towel. Green chilies. I like to wash and deep freeze the green chilies and they will last forever as long as I take to finish them, usually few months. Cauliflower. I usually store cauliflower unwashed. I simply wrap it in a plastic bag with a paper towel on its head and store it upright. It stays fresh for weeks. However, this time I wanted to wash it and store it, so I separated the florets and soaked them in hot water for some time and let it dry on a cloth. Once dried, I keep it in a bucket lined with a paper towel and wrap the bucket with the plastic bag. I checked it after a week and it was still fresh and crisp. Only the stems had discolored slightly, maybe because I washed the florets, that's why, but it was still very fresh and crisp. Coriander. Usually, I store coriander unwashed in an airtight jar with a paper liner on the top and at the bottom and it do really well every time. However, I am experimenting today so I want to wash the coriander and store it with a paper liner but not in an airtight jar, rather a bucket and I am curious to see if it stays good or it does rot. Snake beans. One hack to cut snake beans is to leave them tied in the elastic band and then wash and cut them. It makes handling them so easy. Also cut beans are such a delight to use on the days you are running to make your dinner or lunch as they come in so handy. A little bit time consuming on the days of grocery shopping but it's totally worth it the day you want to use it. This was actually the first vegetable I consumed as it was ready, it was in front of my eyes. So I just took it out and used it straight away. 
Now time to put them in the refrigerator. I will put carrot, beans and pepper, coriander and cauliflower in the bottom shelf. Okra, eggplant, bottle gourd and carrots, they are all packed in a Ziploc bag and it goes in the crisper drawer. In another crisper drawer, I will put capsicum, tomatoes, lemon, avocados or any veggies that has hard skin. So now it's almost a week later and let's see how my veggies did after a week. Coriander survived but there were some rotten leaves which I took off. So next time I will prefer to store unwashed coriander and wash it just before using them. Mint leaves they were as it is, very fresh and green. Cauliflower had some brown spots in the stem after a week but overall it was crisp and fresh. Eggplant was fresh as well but the star performer was bottle gourd or dudi which was farm fresh in this wax paper. I highly recommend sealing dudi's freshness in a glad wrap, paper bag or best use a wax paper. So if you do adopt these practices of storing vegetables, they will stay fresh for at least a week or 10 days and I'm sure they will be consumed way before that and need not to be stored any longer. So guys, this is all I had to share for today's video and if you like anything in this video, please don't forget to hit like. It will give me little more motivation to make such informative videos. I will sign up today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.